the competitive 40K Network presents Art of War. Art of War. Strategy and tactics. Discussions with the best players on the planet. Now your host, Steve Jaw and the Art of War coaches. Hi, folks, and welcome to The Art of War. This is on the Competitive Podcast Network, and we really appreciate you being here with us. The Art of War podcast is all about helping you get better as a player. In fact, all of the Art of War podcasts, Unbroken and Art of War Down Under, all of the podcasts and all of the team at theartofwar40k.com are here to help you get better as a player, and that's what this podcast is all about. And uh, so what we're going to do is, by the way, <laughs> I should introduce myself. My name's Steve Joel. I'm your co-host, along with the number one player in the ITC, John Lennon. Hi there, my friend. How are you? Hello, hello. I'm doing well. Happy to be here. Happy to be chatting with you again, Steve, and uh, getting really excited. Uh, you know, we're, it's, it's January. We know what happens at the end of January. So uh, I am getting ready. Getting ready for Las yeah. Vegas. And we've talked about this, John. This is the whole the whole point of uh, last week and then the next couple of episodes is looking ahead to the LVO and maybe giving people a bit of a, a helping hand in their list construction and some of the ideas of what might be there. But really looking at, at some of the lists, you know, we've talked about Thick City. We've talked about the other Drukhari list. We've talked about, uh, you know, some of the other big players that will be there. And there are new codexes dropping all the time at the moment. But we want to talk about some of the maybe the dark horse lists or some armies that might have been nerfed recently and just see how they are approaching it. Some of the top players are approaching their build up to the LVO. So we're going to introduce our guest for the week in a moment. But first, I want to just give you the rundown of how the podcast works. If you're new to the Art of War, this is how it goes. We're going to do two parts to this episode. Part one is where we look at the list and we're going to break it down in terms of the warlord traits and the uh, relics and what units are in there and what units aren't and how they're broken down with the CP and the strats that get used with those CP and all of the stuff that goes into making the list tick like a finely tuned machine. In part two of the episode, that's where we really look at how this list plays into other top lists. And particularly, we're talking this week especially to a player who's been running the same army for a very long time and adjusted the list according to the metas and the different places he's going and the places he's played. It's an army that's been at the tippy tippy top and then got a little bit nerfed and has had to adjust to the times using his own expression, using his own phrase. We're talking admec and we want to introduce one of the top players, the very best admec players in the world, just off the back of a win at the Tables and Towers GT, went 7-1 and one in Dallas. has got so many GT and major wins, it's impossible to count them all. Mark Hurtle, thanks for being with us. Well, thank you. Thank you. I'm pleasure to be here. So uh, I'm really uh, excited about this list. It's, it's kind of a list that I would have expected to see maybe a couple of years ago before all the new models and all the new pizzazz dropped. So I think probably what we really need to do first is just go through this list top to bottom and see what's in there. And and uh, then we can start talking about it. This is going to be fun. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sounds like a good time. Right. What you got? Give us your, your list. Break it down. All right. My list is basically um, what you get when you just say, all right, I just want to take vehicles. So I just decided that I'm going to take as many vehicles as I can and as much shooting as I can. And I just threw them all in there. So Admech is like point for point, one of the best shooting armies in the game. If you do it right. And I think I've done it a little bit right. So first off, I've got a patrol of um, Lucius. Uh, my I have a Tech Priest Manipulus as a HQ. He's not my Warlord, but he's an HQ in there. I give him the Raymonds of Technomartyr um, Relic, and I give him the um, Artisan's Holy Order, Holy Order trait. Next, I've got um, a unit of Rangers, two units of Rangers, five-man Rangers, and a 20-man unit of Skatari Vanguard, with an Alma Specs on the squad for a nice, juicy Ignorus cover. Um, then I have a Cybernetic Dasmith, who is very nice in there. Uh, you'll see why. He is my actual Warlord. He has the um, low guy as the Holy Order trait. His Warlord trait is basically give Transhuman to a core unit within six or nine inches. Um, and then he has a um, Relic, which allows him to teleport a core unit. That's, that's within three inches of him during the movement phase. Then here's the spicy part. I have five Castellan robots, each of them with a with two fists and a flamer each. And that's my Lucius Patrol. Then I have a um, Spearhead of Mars, 
two Czech Brazilians here. This is my HQs. And then I have two single man last can chickens, uh, Iron Star Balistaris. And then I have three Scorpius Disintegrators, each with an energy cannon. And I've got three Honor Gardoon Crawlers, with each of them with a neutron laser. I love those Honor Gardoon Crawlers, man. Haven't seen Honor Gardoon Crawlers on a table for a little while. So, I think most people haven't. Yeah, this is, there's so much interesting about this. I've got a very good friend here named Aaron who plays AdMech, and it's the army I play against more often than anything else. And Honor Gardoon Crawlers used to be a staple, right? But then they went away. We'll, we'll talk about that maybe more in a minute. I'd really love it if you could tell us what the different relics and warlord traits do. I know that for one of them, you've got the relic that gives the, uh, you know, the can only wound it on a four up, and you've got the teleporting. Uh, and we can we can see why your punchy robots are in the list if you can teleport a unit. So, uh, what about the raiment's relic and the wall of trait on your uh, other guys? So the raiment's of techno marvel that is for the Skatari Vanguard. That's really a buff for them. So what that does for them is that um, it gives I pick a core unit within three inches of them, and they ignore all negative effects for shooting. Basically, bliss skill, negative modifiers, like if your monster will hit me or something like that. Um, so basically, that allows them to hit very reliably, which is very nice because I don't have any ways to reroll for my Skatari Vanguard. They have no rerolls, so I'm just relying on basically just getting all my shots through the one I can get them through. It also gives the guy a five up feeling of pain. That's just icing on the cake, though. It's mainly just for the ignore modifiers in the Skatari Vanguard. Um, Artisans on the um, on the um, Manipulus. That gives me fall back and shoot and fall back and charge. I fall back and shoot at minus one to my ballistic skill, but with Raymond the Techno Marvel, that doesn't matter. But also, fall back and charge is really good for the robots. So basically, and it's also dirt at the end of the movement phase, so I can move them and move whatever unit I'm trying to get in range for them, and then give them fall back and shoot and fall back and charge. So they don't have to start near each other. And you've got all of those uh, great abilities each round to give your army, you know, plus one to shoot. Uh, minus one to hit in combat. There's there's ways to to buff Admech round by round, um, which is you know a fantastic way to to get that army really really pumping, particularly oh, in, the, in the shooting phase, right? That's what uh, it's all the shooting. I need to do well in the shooting phase. <laughs> yeah, you're not worried about the vehicles, given that there are there are um, seem to be so many armies out there at the moment that are real good at popping vehicles. So um, there seems to be yes. But you have to think about it like this. Which armies shoot better than me? Which armies can reliably um, punch through my armor when I, if, and the armies that can, um, they can't necessarily be in range. So basically, you have to think about it like this. What armies will basically be, have range and line of sight to me to be able to outshoot me? Um, now, there's not a lot of them, especially with the changes to orcs, um, because they can't take as many planes as they can before. I don't have to worry about the orc planes. The other orc shooting it really isn't that reliable and has to get a lot closer to me. So orcs really aren't really a problem because orc shooting isn't going to outbeat me. Um, Tau, all right, cool. You bring Tau to um, a, to a GT. Good, good on you. Um, <laughs> you get you get your participation trophy. I'm um, sure so Tau's not really an really issue. <laughs> it's not relevant yet. So when you get the new codex, then you can come back to me and tell me, oh, you can you can put me in my place. But until you get your new codex, Tau, you're staying on the shelves. Um, but basically, like Space Marines, all their guns are multi melters or their Contemptor Volkites, which basically, all right, all right, cool, your Contemptor Volkites is strength six, minus one AP and Devastator Doctrine. But basically, it's, it's most of my vehicles are T7, and I can just hide the chickens pretty easily. So basically, you're wounding me on five, so you're Contemptor Volkites. Um, and your multi melters are 24 inch range, so they're not going to easily get in range of me. Um, you have your Eldar, they're not really great shooting for anti vehicle. Drukari, um, raiders aren't really a thing anymore. You'll see maybe one raider on the table. You won't see more than that. So they're not popping my vehicles. Um, there's no other army in the game that's going to shoot, outshoot my vehicles and kill my vehicles from a distance. Right. The range is the big deal, right? And this is what I always found or have found playing Admech that it's so hard. Even deploying against Admech is so hard because you you can just you can move. And then without penalty, you've got all those guns. You're like your chickens move yep. ten or whatever it is, and you can pop a thing to make them auto move another six. No penalty yep. to that. And then they're shooting forty eight inches anyway with those laser cannons, which do D three three plus D three. It's just too much. No, it, it well, really is. It really is. It's the maneuverability and also like if if there is another army that's gonna outshoot me and I'm worried about them popping my vehicles, because there are there are like your odd vehicles list, heavy list. Or things like that, they'll maybe like Tekken for anti vehicles. I do have the ways to give myself plus one armor safe and cover safe for my basically my entire army. 
So basically, I'm sitting on a one-up armor save immediately if I'm going second. It's just like, all right, cool. You go first. Um, come out and shoot me. That's fun. I'll yeah. just counter shoot you. Fair. Yeah. So I guess um, you know, starting off with like you know my questions here. Looking at the playstyle, obviously this is designed primarily as a as a shooting army, and you know you're kind of like challenging people. Like, hey, if you want to sh- get in a shooting match, be my guest. You can take the first punch, but mine is going to knock you out. Is kind of like the mindset with having this many guns. Um, my question is, uh, does it present an issue if people are able to get too close to you? Like, uh, you know, you mentioned like, yeah, Eldar are never going to outshoot me, and you know what? I don't think any Eldar player is going to want to try. <laughs> Um, how do you deal with, uh, you know, people who are able to, you know, go really quickly, get you in combat, engage you, any kind of like no fallback tricks? Do those, uh, present problems for you? How do you like protect against that? They can, they can, um, it's mainly knowing what your opponents can do. And most fault, no fallback tricks don't work against vehicles. Mm -hmm. Most of them are against infantry only. So basically as long as you don't get your infantry to talk in combat with those units, you're usually fine. And I find that usually nothing that can keep a unit in combat usually wants to deal with uh, five Castellan robots. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. That is true, especially buffed Castellan robots. Yes, and I've got a lot of ways to give like my infantry and my Castellans fall back and I can give both of those fall back and shoot, fall back and charge. So basically, like if you tie up my Castellans with like a unit and it's like, all right, well, I don't kill you now. It's like, all right, well, I'll still fall back and charge you. Okay. So which trick lets you, uh, what's the thing that lets you fall back and charge? That's, so, the, um, that's the artisans from the manipulators. The artisans, very useful. I always see how to make fall back and shoot against me. I usually don't and fall also, back and also, charge. And um, also, um, the teleport relic, mm-hmm. um, that also allows me to teleport out of combat because I'm not moving. I'm not falling back of course, from combat, I'm just teleporting. Got it. So then I'd also be able to shoot with the, that unit too. Mm-hmm. Is the... Is the teleport? No, it doesn't is, work on a vehicle. Doesn't work on vehicles. Okay, so it's core. Well, it, 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 so so it, it is core locked. However, the the castellans are core if they're within range of the basement. Of course. All right, all adds up. Uh, if we can ask about the list, going to uh, back to list construction and the way you've put it all together, we did mention the Onager Dune Crawlers and and the fact that we haven't seen so many Onager Dune Crawlers, uh, you know, on the table for a little while. And you've got that that big gun that does the big damage with uh, not so many shots. But there are some things missing from the list, and I'm curious as to the decision making process about what went in there. Things like the planes, you know, we see the planes that. Uh, can either do the bombing runs or or throw laser cannon shots out at people. Uh, why have you decided that they are not going to be useful in the list at the moment? So I never ran the planes when they were, even when they were a big thing. I only ever owned one. I only have one bomber. But the thing is that, like, I never liked the planes as a play style because, like, if you go second and your opponent did bring enough shooting, you can't hide the planes. Like, you can never hide the planes from any enemy shooting. And it's just like, I never want to be in a position where it's just like, I go second and I auto lose because I can't hide my units. I always wanted to have the option to hide my units. And with the nerfs to the planes, it's like, yeah, they were really good. And they still are good, but they aren't as good anymore with the points nerf. Right. And what about some of the other units that I know you have used in the past to good effect, but they have cool tricks, things like the Cerberus Raiders that can, you know, do the, particularly against combat armies, make people auto-fail charges, that sort of thing. You know, you've got lots of other units that could be in there that aren't in there, and you've decided... I mean, you said that right at the start, really. You've just decided to go with guns, guns, and more, more uh, sorry, vehicles, vehicles, and more vehicles. Um, but those sort of things, you, do, you don't see a place for those little units and those trick units in there? So not in this list. Um, basically, they're all good units. They all have a purpose. But like in this list, everything is built towards the purpose of outshooting my opponents and basically just like putting as much damage on the table as possible. Because it's a lot easier to win a game when your opponent can't play it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. And as a... For, and I'm not a player at, at John's level, obviously, or at your level. But uh, for me, in a, as a mid-tier guy, if you turn up on the other side of your t- of the uh, table with that list, with that army, it looks to me like what your plan is, is to shoot a hole and then teleport five Castellan robots with fists into that hole and then just do maximum damage with those guys. Have I got that wrong? Is that kind of a very, I mean, it would depend on um, what you're playing. But... So it, it depends on what I'm playing against. It depends on what I'm playing against. It depends on what I need them to do. Because, like, I'm always trying to play the mission, too. Because, like, I'm trying to score as many points as possible. Um, because, like, it doesn't do me any good if I don't, it doesn't, so it doesn't do me any good if I just, if I just kill you, but I don't win the mission. Because, like, there are ways that other people can basically out, in theory, someone could outplay me, possibly. But like what it is basically like the ro- is like I have options. I don't always teleport the robots up turn one. Maybe I'll just run, advance them turn one and get them onto an objective and and then basically save the teleport for when I need it 
to teleport them later on on the table. Maybe I'll teleport the Skrar Vanguard to get them in a position to shoot and put and position them so that the, the day Smith is going to be within range of the robots when they advance up. It's all about the options that are available to me. It's not always like it's a one and done. It's basically it's like, all right, cool. I've got a plan for the next turn. I've got to see like, all right, cool. If I don't kill this unit, that unit can advance up and then charge me next turn. And so you have to look at like what your opponent can do to mess with your plan too. Because there's a lot of lists that can do things to you, like White Scar, Space Marines, turn two Drukari. So you have to worry about like what your opponent's going to do on their turn. You can't just move up and just like kill what you want. Because sometimes your opponent might be baiting you into moving up, and then you're just like, all right, cool. Well, now I'm in trouble. Because now my tanks are getting wrapped. Now my tanks are getting surrounded. Now my tanks are getting tied up. Because I can't really fall back and shoot with the tanks. Mm -hmm. Right. Got it. So my uh, one, of, one of the questions I have is I actually want to just take a minute and talk a little bit more about the robots. Because I know, um, you know, the robots, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, they're the one thing that did get cheaper in the Admech update, right? Yes. Yes, they are. Okay. So what are all the different buffs that you can stack on the robots? You know, they, they really um, haven't appeared in a while. Yeah. At least in ninth edition, I have not seen robots at all. So I kind of want to hear what the full package you can put on them is. I know oh, you can make them so you want my tricks. You want my tricks. I, I do want them. Right. No, 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 give, them, all give them all to me. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so for one thing, um, there's a fight last stratagem for core cult mechanicus characters, or for core cult mechanicus units and characters. Uh, one CP at the start of the fight phase, you make an enemy unit that's not a vehicle and not a monster if I last. So all of your Space Marine um, characters or your Blade Guard veteran and stuff like that. All right, cool. All of a sudden, they're fighting last, and then I'm going to fight first with my robots. Mm -hmm. um, you have, um, I can give them Ignore AP 1 and 2, which is very good against Grey Knights um, because all their weapons are pretty much AP 1 and 2. I can give them Transhuman, and I can teleport them. Um, that's pretty much most of the... Um, there's also a stratagem, an impact hit stratagem for every robot that gets in engagement range. You can basically roll down and two up. You take the enemy, you pick a unit, that unit takes more wound for every robot in engagement range and on two up. But I haven't used that stratagem ever because I haven't needed to. So but I have it. One Katan is going to find out about that at some point. One Katan is going to find out. When I play Necrons, they're going to they're find out about that. <laughs> It's, uh, the the other big thing with the robots was the the change to the the way they work, right? Just the the basic way they work, and the particularly the shooting bots, which I know these are not, but it used to be that thing where you had to plant your you'd see shooting bots plant point. their feet and double shooting and all of that sort of stuff. Now robots are much more free to move around the table and do do whatever the hell they want to do. Yeah, they're much more free to move around the table because you don't want to lock them down because they only get less skill three. Whereas like I can change their protocol to be they started as a two up armor save in the Aegis protocol. They've got three different protocols. Aegis Protocol was just starting as a two-up armor save. Um, then they changed, I can spend a CP to change at the start of any turn, uh, start of any phase, to be um, weapon skill two and reroll charges. Um, and then I can also, I'll never do it because there's no need to, but I can lock in place and then give them weapon skill, or blue skill three. So basically, so when I'm ready to charge you, I, all of a sudden the charge phase, all right, cool. One CP, reroll charges, weapon skill two. All of a sudden, they're five attacks, strength 10, minus three, three damage flat each. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I cool now, I'm hitting you on twos. Yeah. And you've they're got the... T7 uh, and seven wounds, which is very important. You've, yeah, the seven, the seven wounds, wounds is a killer. Is very big. Yeah, seven and you, wounds is very important. Is it a Doctrina or a uh, Canticle, which gives them a, a 3d6 charge as well? So you've got... Uh, you've canticle. Been, they don't, they don't get access to the Doctrinas. So you get that one turn where you can buff the crap out of them, <laughs> teleport them, 3d6 charge into something, make that something fight last. And even if that something can interrupt, it can't do anything because you've got transhuman and ignores AP1 <laughs> and 2 and everything yes. else. And if he needs yes. to stop and interrupt, you can make something fight last after you charge it. Yep. If you charge something <laughs> yeah. scary enough to interrupt, you can always... Not, not that you have that many combat units, you know, starting with the, uh, <laughs> the robots, but that is, that is pretty useful. Yeah. 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 And then uh they also have an, an incendium flamer. Is that just a yeah. is that just like a it's heavy a, flamer? It is a heavy flamer, but it's neg two AP. Okay. So that's but here's the thing. Here's the here's the thing. They're Lucius. Here here's another thing. Lucius gives me plus one armor save against one damage weapons. Mm -hmm. So basically all of a sudden if you're attacking me with like neg three power swords, all right, cool, I'm gonna two up armor save, I'm gonna one up armor save. All of a sudden I'm gonna four up save. That's important because the robots do not have an invul save in close combat. They only have a five invul save against shooting, but their invul save against shooting, if they roll a six to on their invul save, they bounce a mortal wound back on the attacking unit. Nice. But um yeah, the robots are just very um they're very versatile. There was something else I was gonna say about the robots. Um 
They move eight inches. That's nice. They're not actually super slow. Um, but they also the, uh, the yeah Lucius Lucius gives me plus three inch range on my weapons. Mm-hmm. So basically now the flamers are fifteen inch range. Okay, that is big. So it just makes it a little harder to screen out if you deep strike. Makes that Overwatch everyone's getting it if you charge them. Just well, and also their core, their core. So I have access to the inter, to the um, the intercept strategy. Of course, of course. If all of a sudden I... you're like gene, your gene seals popping in with nine inches to me, all right, cool. E five flamers. Hmm. Um, I want that. Is the number of robots significant? Again, going back to the the list building principle of this uh, part of the episode, when you're putting your list together, what's your thinking with having five robots? Um, because six, I guess, um, six, you can't, you have, to, you have to have two within two at all times, and four is too few. Uh, <laughs> easy as that. Got it. Ooh. You know, I'm, I'm happy to see uh, the big, big roses on the table again. I have not seen those in a while. Um, I was wondering if, uh, how long it would take people to, uh, to try to make a build out of the robots after, when they got, went down. Because, you know, we saw with the Dark Elder, a couple things went down, they immediately went on board. But uh, happy to see that uh, you're able to make the robots work. So moving through uh, kind of the rest of the list, um, I guess um, uh, just more from a conceptual standpoint, how does this uh, how does this play on the table? So I know you mentioned, you know, if you kill your opponent, they're not going to be able to score any points. From a secondary perspective, how do you try to get your points? Um, I always take stranglehold. Okay. That's pretty much um, my go-to strategy. And everything else is dependent on the uh, mission and the um, what my opponent is bringing. Mm-hmm. Um, because if it's an easy mission secondary, I'll take that. Um, but like oftentimes, I'll do banners because I've got a bunch of little characters that are just running around the table with no auras, so it doesn't matter if they if they lose auras. Yeah, so yeah, I'll just yeah. like banner with them. Um, easy access with the tech priest engine series to banner. Um, so banners is usually an easy one for me to do. Um, but I'll do stranglehold, and then I'll usually I'll either do grind or I'll do like um, something that's easy, like um, assassinate or something that'll give me a lot of points. What about the admix specific ones? You're not looking at those. There's one in particular that no. uh, is real easy, but you're taking too many vehicles maybe to make it easy. <laughs> hey, you... you might as well do grind at that at that point. Yeah. Okay. So there's so there's because nothing would... in the admix book that makes you go, and you haven't obviously built towards anything admix specific. No, because all the Admech ones basically like um, would either replace the ones that I would take would replace Stranglehold, and then the ones that I would take would grind is just better because like I have to kill more infantry than you kill my vehicles, and it's just like all right, cool. Well, if I just do grind, it doesn't matter if I kill more non-vehicles right. than you kill my units in general. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And when you when you've got an army loaded with vehicles, it's probably not you know, great just to that. give people another reason. Well, when well, most of my units are vehicles, it's just like, yeah, I'm just gonna kill one vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> um, you've got eight CP. You start the game with eight CP with this list. Uh, so what are you spending it on? What are what are the stratagems that you're using? Uh, are uh, there some that you go to each turn, or do you space them out, or do you have different ones depending on opponent? Wrath of Mars is one I usually use on a disintegrator. Um, I'll usually use like the plus one to hit to give an extra unit you know, plus one to hit from the engines here. That's a good one. Um, I actually don't usually spend too many CP all the time because like um, it's all about conserving it, making sure I'm ready to use it when I need to buff the robots. Right. Um, um, the two CP um auto wound on fives for the Star Vanguard. That's a big one. Hmm. I have two C. I can get two CP back from the um artisans and low guy. From the Holy Order traits, um, so basically I might as well start with 10 CP. There's right. also a with a one CP strategy to give the Doom Crawlers might as well be hit from the smoke screens. They all have smoke launchers. Um, yeah, yeah, it's just like situational things that I need to use. Okay. Is this is there still a thing with the Dune Crawlers where if you put them within six of each other, they get some sort of buff to their save, or is that a thing, or is that gone now? That's no longer a thing. I wish it was because, okay. like, um, it used to be you got like either real ones to your invul save in the eighth, and then like um, in seventh edition you got like plus one to your invul save, so you could get like a four up invul save on a squadron of three. Wow. But nothing anymore. You get no I'm benefit from being gone. near each other. Happy. <laughs> so, a unit that we actually have barely even mentioned so far is the Scorpius tanks. Um, I, I'm never really quite sure when they dropped off. But there was definitely a point in time when Scorpius tanks uh, were everywhere, and then it kind of felt like they just disappeared. And I uh, and uh, did you have two in the list, or was there a third one? 
Oh, there's three. There's three? Okay. All right. So three Scorpius tanks. Uh, what loadout do you run on their main guns? And uh, which The energy cannon. The, you... the mortar. The mortar version? Okay. Um, I've seen recently seen some people switch over to the direct fire one because it's damage three and uh, after the, the mortar kind of lost its strength. Uh, did you consider that at all, at all, or do you think you just have enough direct line of sight firepower? I have enough direct. All my direct fire is better against like the stuff that reduces damage by one, anyways. Mm -hmm. So the direct fire doesn't make sense, and I need something to target things that are hiding out of line of sight, like your mer your tactical marines. Your, I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, not tactical marines. Your intercessor squads. Your like <laughs> other stuff that's just like two wounds just hiding off in the corner, or just like guards or something. Wolf. <laughs> the one cyber wolf. Yes. Yeah. But it's like because like because people have to respect that the mortar is basically like I've got three of them. This is just like all right, cool. I'm trying to hide this thing. This is like all right, cool. I'll, if they, I normally I can just hide the my characters or just my units and then just not worry about anything. But with the mortar, basically, it's like all right, cool. Once I kill everything that's guarding your characters, I can target your characters now. They're gonna die. Yeah, if they get shot by enough enough uh, mortars, uh, that's gonna be a real real problem. Okay, so. It, it kind of seems like the list has gone all in on firepower, and you've got the one really big brick as like a deterrent. And then once people accept that they can't shoot you, or I'm sorry, that they can't get close to the castle and break you, then the deterrent comes to them, and you go ahead and just launch it downfield once you're no longer worried about them getting to your castle. Is that uh, kind of how this looks to play? Oh uh, no, I go ham. I'll, I go ham. Turn one. Ham turn one. You don't. You I don't go worry ham, about someone getting to the castle like after the the robots have left. Like I'm just saying, if if, well, if you leave the the door unlocked, I'm there's I'm a go lot up. of space. There's a lot of space you gotta get through, and, <laughs> and my vehicles take up a lot of space. Like those dune crawlers, they take up a lot of space. Like you might sag one of them, and that's fine. All right, cool. I'm moved back with my dune crawler. Now you're armed. now you're you didn't thought I was tagging my dune crawler. There's an entire other army that's the rest of my army that's gonna shoot you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're okay. big bases, right? So uh... they're huge bases. They're like four or five inches wide. Yeah, yeah. they're actually bigger uh, than a greater demon, I think. Yes. I'm interested with the uh, the Dune Crawlers about their neutron laser, that decision, uh, because there is another option, isn't there? Yeah, there is. You have the Icarus Ray, but like the Icarus Ray is like, all right, cool. Most of the guns, you have one D6 damage gun, but like um, it's just, it doesn't do anything. The, the main thing about the Dune Crawlers is they're a replacement for chickens. Because like, it's not like I went to Dune Crawlers and was like, all right, cool, I'll run a bunch of Dune Crawlers. It's like, all right, chickens went up to 85 points for the last game, and Dune Crawlers is 120 points with a heavy stubber and neutral laser. And it's just like, all right, cool. It's T7, 11 wounds, five of them will save, and three bomber save. That thing is a tough enough to crack for 120 points. It's cheap, and with three of them, they're reliable enough to kill what I need to kill. Okay. And so if you don't completely kill it... Sorry, John, go ahead. I was just going to say, like, you, you kind of view the Onager as just like a big chicken? Yeah. Okay. Because, like, I still run two single-man chickens, but, like, if you run big squads of chickens, they're more susceptible to get shot. And they're more susceptible to dying. Yeah. The neutral is also strength twelve, which is very important in certain matchups. I can think of some toughness six floating around. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just one yeah. or two. Some bigger or two. tusk blobs. The tusk um, blobs, um, gray knight, dread knights. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, uh, the the other big thing about Onager Dune Crawlers I found is that because, as you just mentioned, they're they're slightly harder to kill if you don't completely kill it. They just get they just get uh, repaired, right? And so <laughs> yeah. then they're back up and running, and everything's fine again. Yeah, there's lots of times where like people fail to kill the Doom Crawl, and it's like, all right, cool, back up, this back up the full, full bracket. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, not bad. All right, so um, moving on through um, you know through my my little list of questions, I always keep. Um, I kind of want to talk to you a little bit about terrain. Um, obviously, you know more, you know you have a lot of guns. If there was no ruins in front of your opponent's army, you just shoot them off the table. Um, I'm curious uh, what kind of terrain formats uh, you've played this on and how much of an impact you think uh, terrain has. Like, uh, I don't know if you've played this on like the GW format, the front line oh, the, format. This is not, this is not for, this is not for GW terrain. Mm -hmm. um, I would not take this list on to a GW tournament. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, GW terrain is, um, I haven't played much on it, but like from what I've seen of it, um, I just 100% know this list would not do well in GW terrain. Um, you, can, you can basically play around a lot of terrain. Like it, it can be, it can, it'll do well in heavy terrain because, like, then you, your opponent will have trouble seeing you too. And I've got three mortars, and so it's basically like I can shoot indirect out of sight. But on GW terrain, it's just too much terrain. There's like no way to get line of sight. Like that's one of the things is like Tau and at, and my Admac list are going to be very dependent on terrain. Like if there's if there's too much terrain where you're just never able to see anything, you're going to lose that game. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, I guess like, have you mainly been practicing like the frontline style? I, I wasn't at the Tales yeah. and uh, Towers uh, tournament, unfortunately. So I, I didn't. Yeah, see I've been. I, um, that was um, that was um, player plus train. Like it was going to be at LVO. Okay. Uh, that's how this, I've been playing. Okay. So uh, I kind of want to uh, now ask you a little bit about how the list came to be. Um, I'm curious uh, when you were writing this. Is this like the first? Is this draft one? Have you been kind of perfecting the style list? Is there anything that wasn't in the list at the tournament that you kind of wanted to include? Uh, this was basically my this is basically my final draft almost for LVO. Um, okay. After I played against Genesis a few times, it might change a little bit. I'm um, maybe throwing a techno archaeologist for the uh, Camp Day track within 12 inches mobile. Mm -hmm. But like um, this is what this was my this is like uh, my fifth or sixth iteration of the list because originally I was running the, like, as like Mars like a sing, like single book. Like two attachments is both all Mars, but like two units of three robots. Then it was just like, well, if I throw in the robots and the Lucius, I can teleport them, give them all these survivable buffs. And it kind of evolved from there. The basic premise of the list is basically the um, Doom Crawlers and the Disintegrators and the two sealed chickens. That's kind of been the that's kind of been like a staple. And then it's been figuring out like what to do with the Lucius part with the robots. How best to run the robots. Got it. Okay. So I will is it I... One... Oh, go ahead. At one point, I was instead of running the twenty man unit of Vanguard, I was running a um, five man unit of Cal Farm Breachers, but they didn't do much. It's just like, all right, cool, they sit around and don't die, but they don't do much. Whereas, like with the Vanguard, they're a lot more dangerous against like Thick City and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and they actually can be a lot more survival because I can transhuman and give them the ignore if you want to as well. If I ever lose the robots, yeah, okay, I like a uh, yeah, I like the Vanguard unit a lot. I, I... I know everyone went very ranger heavy for a while, but uh, with a uh, you know thick city everywhere, and then even the genes that are called emerging, that's a lot of infantry as well. Uh, just the weight of fire that the vanguard unit can put down, frankly, scares me. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I live in your fear. Ah. Is, is there anything that you lose by mixing up your forge worlds? Is there anything that gets taken away by not just having all Mars? No, uh, not at the moment. No. Yeah. Okay. You just lose access to the uh, the Skatari Defense Network, which, um, like like the various I couldn't take the robots in any that's not that's not a huge problem for you, anyways. It's not because okay. I couldn't take the robots if I took that. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, true. Right on. And the reason for having two Tech Priest engine seers, just is cheap to possible the hit. repair thing. Sorry, no, say it's, again? It's, they give a plus one to hit buff for a vehicle. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're just putting them in different places to give different yep. groups of vehicles. And then you do... Yep. And then one of them can do it twice for one CP. So basically, it. so it's like, I can always be possible hit on my, on my Scorpius Sang Raiders or on Doom Crawlers, because like, I'll just be, I'll always be puzzle, puzzle, puzzle. Yeah. yeah, got it. You just kind of pick whichever one of the tanks is most important in a given turn, and just give all of them plus one to, you know, hit. Yeah. yeah that's super solid, super solid. Um... Man, I haven't been shot by a Scorpius in a while, and I'm really not looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do I do want to warn you, though, since you mentioned uh, the GW format. I don't know if you saw, but uh, at LVO, it looks like they're going to have a couple of GW tables. I don't really I've know I've heard that, many. too, but I think I think it's going to be maybe the bottom tables. Because, okay. like, it doesn't make sense to have it on the top tables. At least, God help me, it doesn't make sense to have it on the top tables. Because the packet doesn't list GW train in the packet. So all the yeah. top players are playing for the are playing on based playing on the packet the yeah. that they released and that, that they've always had released for a while. And it's just like, all right, cool. All of a sudden, hey, top tables are going to be all GT, all all games workshop. It's just like, all right, cool. I I would have to protest that myself because like I've been preparing all this time for to play on on frontline terrain. Mm -hmm. I haven't been playing. I didn't go to LVO to play on GW terrain. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Yeah, I just I just want to make sure you knew that because it, it kind of took me uh oh, yeah. took me back when I heard about it as well. It, it took me by surprise too, and I was almost going to change my list, but then it's just like it doesn't make sense to play this on the top tables. And I think they've said they I think I've heard rumors that it's not going to be on the top tables because it doesn't make sense to have it on the top tables. Right on. Okay. Um, I could be wrong though. Time well, will tell. I, I guess we'll both find out at the same time. Uh, if, <laughs> yeah. I I hope there's no GW for you, but if we play, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back on that. <laughs> yeah, well, you're you're gonna hope that we play round one on GW train. Absolutely, <laughs> give me that GW train. That's what I love. I live for it. Yeah. All righty. So, um, I'm trying to think. Uh, what other question I have? You've been pretty thorough on uh, on answering these. Steve, you got any more for me while I uh cook something up? 
No, man. Honestly, I uh, I guess the only other thing I, I would I was wondering about when I was looking at the list, and you've kind of covered it off already, is 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 how come just one twenty man vanguard unit? You've got a couple of smaller units of 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 troops, but having one twenty man unit kind of uh, in my mind make it makes uh, that unit susceptible to just kind of thinning it down to kind of eight, nine, ten guys, and then not worrying about it for you, for the opponent. I mean, yeah, but the problem is that like they've got the rest of the army to worry about. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And you, as if, I say, if, you if they're focusing on my vanguard, it's like, all right, cool. That's nice. Um, I win this game now. And this is this is the the thing with the list is actually when you look at it, there are so many threats. It's like there's so many different things that you kind of need to take care of right now. As a um, and we'll, we'll get into more specific matchups in part two, but I'm kind of always looking at it from a Space Marines player. I'm a Space Wolf player, so those mortars are just they're death to me. I hate those things and I want to get rid of them as soon as I can. But if I get close enough, then I'm getting hit in the face with robots and then shot in the face with neutron lasers. And it's just, that's not okay. Yeah. And the, and the, and the centigrades are usually the ones I hide. Like I'll throw, I'll put my doom crawlers on the line if I can't hide them, but my centigrades are usually the ones I hide. Right. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, it makes sense. You know, they've got the indirect and, you know, as you mentioned, the, the onagers are relatively cheap for their stat line. And going out, and they have a five ball save. Yeah, you know, makes it just a little bit risky to engage them, and there's not that much of a reward when there's just a few of them sitting behind. Um, I did actually want to. I remembered my question. I did want to talk a little bit about rangers, specifically the fact that you don't have any. Um, I know you've mentioned, you know, that you like to use a strat with Vanguard uh, for you know dealing with things like Thick City. Uh, Was that the main motivation for taking Vanguard over Rangers, or do you just like them better? Um, I like Vanguard better because I like the muscle strength, the muscle toughness debuff, but also I like to be able to advance and shoot with them. Mm-hmm. Um, the problem with Rangers is that um, if you do the math on like the amount of damage you're going to get through onto anything, um, you get a lot more damage in with with the Vanguard. Um, because think about it this way: um, if you shoot with the Rangers and you're in the plus and blue skill hit thing, mm-hmm. plus and blue skill doctrina. Um, and you're shooting into, say, a unit of Talos or Chronos, or let's, let's just say a Dread Knight, for instance. Um, uh, let's let's do Chronos. Let's do Chronos because, like, that's what the Rangers will do. The Vanguard do as well. Um, so you shoot 60 shots because you pop the stratagem, um, which is like two CP, and then you get 60 shots. Um, you're gonna hit 50 times because I've got no rerolls. Out of those 50 shots, you're gonna wound um, one third of the time. So you're gonna get about um, 16 wounds or so. Um, and then they're going to make a, they're going to, you're going to be AP two. So you're going to have a five of armor save. Um, they're going to make, um, one third of those saves. You're going to get eight wounds through, and then you're going to get like maybe six or eight wounds through, and then they're going to get a five final pain. You did five wounds to a Talos for two CP. Uh, whereas with the Sorry Vanguard, you pay their three shots each. I can advance with them. I can, I can advance and shoot with them. Um, they're AP one. So they're only going to, they're only going to get half their wounds through to the Chronos and Talos, but. For two CP, I auto wound them on fives to hit. Now, those 60 shots, that becomes 20 wounds. And then out of those 20 wounds, basically I've got 30 more, I've got 30 more hits because one of one six of them miss. Out of those 30 more hits, I get six more wounds. I get 26 wounds through to Kronos. Okay. Yeah. That's right, a better so, number. Yeah. yeah the, those are the things you're building for, you know, those top of the metal list right now. If you're built out to built to take them out, that's enough. Yep. And it's even better against like grotesque because then they don't they're on a six of impulse slave. I feel like we, and it's also we, it's also can't, it's also very good against marines. It's just like all right, five of, it wouldn't you on fives minus one right, minus one AP and ignoring cover. Mm-hmm. Marines do not like that. We're sneaking into specific matchup talk now, so I think we're going ah, to have ah. to we're going to have to say uh, unless there's anything else you know in terms of the list construction um, that we haven't asked that you want to cover off, Mark. Is there anything else that? That you uh, any thought that you put into the list construction that we haven't covered that maybe people should know about? Uh, nothing that comes to mind. Okay, great. Before we before we wind up uh, part one of this episode, is there anywhere people can find you? Are you involved in any um, content creation that people can be a part of? How do we get hold of you? Um, people must be on Facebook all the time, but I don't really do any um, content creation myself. Okay, great. But available for uh, available for Facebook, <laughs> available on Facebook if people have any burning questions, maybe. Listen, we really appreciate your time, mate. Thank you for being here for part one of this. 
Uh, for folks listening, if you are not a subscriber to The Art of War, then you are going to miss out on all the juicy stuff in part two of this conversation, where we really do break down how this goes into things like Marines and Pick City and Orcs and all of the other armies that are out there that are expected to do well at the LVO. Uh, so if you play Admech or you regularly play against Admech, we are going to be breaking down how all of this works in part two of this episode. And we'd love to see you there, but you can only listen to it if you're a subscriber. So head over to theartofwar40k.com and subscribe and join up and be part of the war room and get yourself some coaching. You've got the most approachable, the best players in the game, in the world, as part of that Art of War team and uh, they'd love to hear from you. So go over to theartofwar40k.com and be a part of it. It's a great community. Got a great Discord going there as well. In the meantime, if you are not a subscriber, we'll catch you next time. And if you are, we'll see you in just a few minutes, just as long as it takes you to push play on the next part of this podcast. Mark, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate your time, my friend. Oh, and, uh, John, we will talk to you real soon. This is The Art of War. All right. Like what you just listened to? Check out Art of War Down Under and Art of War Unbroken on the competitive 40K network. The Art of War 40K.com.